I've shared some information with you about how I built my DIY vapor blaster during my CB750 videos, but now I've decided to devote an entire video series to it. If you're interested in learning more, or maybe you're building your own vapor blaster, stay tuned. Hello everybody, welcome to Doc Jones Garage, and welcome to my new video series focusing on my basic vapor blaster build. Future episodes will include all of the upgrades that I plan on doing. A lot of the footage that you're going to see in the first part of this video series was taken while I had the vapor blaster disassembled so that I could finish a few cosmetic things that needed to be done, some painting, resealing, and I had to patch the gloves. So my apologies if the video footage seems to jump around a little bit, it was taken over the course of a few weeks. Let's break down the content of this episode. All of these bullet points are going to be available in the video description and they'll appear down in the timeline as chapters for easy navigation. The frame and the wheels, the funnel, the cabinet, the lighting, the hoses and the gun, the pump, the compressor. Okay, we are looking at the, uh, the vapor blaster frame. So it wasn't painted before, so now I've given it a, just a quick coat of trim class so you can see. Very basic. Two inches angle on the corners. Just kind of wondering. Here's angle. This is angle. This is just some angle that I had. It's kind of a weird size. I think I ordered these from Castortown. And these are kind of nice because the brake stops from swiveling too. So that's it. Everything's just bolted together with quarter inch bolts. So you, I just, I couldn't really remember how thick it was, so I just put the micrometer on it. So it's basically 60 thou. I think it was like 61 thou. I didn't do the welding. A buddy of mine did the welding. Welded inside and out. At this point this thing is still really very light and easy to move around. It might even be overkill with those wheels on there but that's kind of the standard wheel I use for a lot of my stuff. And like I said I think I get those from Castor Town. They're pretty reasonable. I think it's like a urethane tire just to make it roll around nicely and not make quite so much noise. Next, we'll have a look at the cabinet. So, like I already said, I designed the cabinet out of Baltic birch. And if you're not sure what Baltic birch is, it's essentially plywood, but it's constructed of several different layers in order to give it stability. I designed the cabinet in Fusion 360. That way then I could really kind of see what it was gonna look like ahead of time. And uh, it made it a little bit easier figuring out all the different angles. Once I had the cabinet constructed, I sanded everything, I sealed the corners up really well, and then I painted everything with epoxy paint. I made sure to give it several thin coats. So mainly what I did was, is because I had a few sheets of glass that were all the same size, like what I used on the cabinet, I, I kind of based it around that, and I based it around the available sizes of Baltic birch. Center part of the body is made out of half inch, and the end pieces are made out of three quarter inch. That way then the door was gonna be nice and um, sturdy. And also I had some three quarter inch Baltic birch, so it was an opportunity to use that up. I've made all of the trim pieces out of oak, because I have an abundance of oak that I've recycled. Uh, the outside's just painted with trim clad. It's a little bit sharp here, so it cut my gloves. So now I have to reseal these in here. I put my gloves on there. Like so. So I'm gonna have to tip the cabinet. So I got the gloves reinstalled. You can see the aluminum frame here that I made that the the mesh inside sits on. So, and then cuts on the weight. I think it's a one by two aluminum tubing. You can see now the 
the lip of the glove actually is above that so it's it's pretty firm that's where the air comes in for the gun lights on the inside are just led strip lighting that you can get off of amazon just make sure to get the stuff that's uh, is there's got silicone or something on the outside of it to make it waterproof obviously i got a connector kit that i was planning on you know making the led strip lighting like square like the mesh on the inside that is attached to but once I got it and seen how flexible it was and, and decided to just zip tie it in place, then I didn't use any of those connectors. So really, I didn't need to get those. As you can see, we've got the vapor blaster mainly put back together. I've turned the light on so that you can see just how bright it is in there. I've painted the window trim and reinstalled it. Got the slurry line reinstalled. All I'm using is a, a piece of red rubber hose. It's three quarter inch inside diameter. You can see it pass through the uh, mesh there and it goes down to the bottom of the funnel and that's where it connects up to the pump. So next thing to do would be to connect the airline. So before we reinstall the gun, let's have a look at it and I'll pull it apart and talk about the process a little bit that I went through making this. I essentially uh, followed a step-by-step how-to video from a guy from New Zealand. His channel's called Armory Enterprises, and I believe he actually builds these for people, but uh, he's kind enough to actually have a how-to video on his channel for those people that have access to a lathe um, and know where to find this stuff. So that was rather handy. So as you can see here, and like what I mentioned before, the slurry line is three quarter inch, um, and the airline is half inch. Uh, the body is made out of strainer and it had a uh, where the three quarter inch line is attached there was a cap there so I took all that off and uh, before I actually upsized the size of the slurry line the I had just drilled and tapped the cap out for I think I was running half inch line for the slurry as well but I found that it just it wasn't getting enough flow so as you can see here I've got it all loosened off the three quarter inch barb is off and you can kind of see maybe on the inside there, you can see in the back, way back there, that is attached to this. So let me pull this off here right now. Now that what that is, is just a regular half inch barb. But what I did is drilled and tapped the inside for pipe thread and then turn this piece of aluminum, uh, turn it into a nozzle essentially. You can see on the end, and that fits up inside there. Now this ceramic nozzle, I just got off of Amazon. I think these are just six mil ceramic nozzles and they're for sandblasting. But then all you have to do is get, I think this is, um, I don't remember off the top of my head, it may be five eighths or half inch, like a, uh, a compression, a brass compression fitting. So normally what you would do, I had to modify this so that it'll fit over top of this ceramic, just like that, right? And it doesn't need to be tight, right? Obviously you don't wanna crack the ceramic, but it's just snug and just holds everything in place. And as you can see, if I can get this off, there we go. So here's what it looks like. Get my head out of the frame. Here's what it looks like when it's inside. This. You can see the end of the nozzle in there. So let me spin the nozzle out. Now you can see all the way through. So when the nozzle's on, let's go like that. And it works. So you can also go and check out Armory Enterprises YouTube channel and follow along step by step, just like I did to his video. Make sure you give it a thumbs up because it's a really good video. So the next thing is um, just like a sandblasting gun, if you have experience working with or setting up a sandblasting gun, you know that they can be a little bit quirky and you know that 
Um, you have to take the time and get them set up properly. Now I haven't invested very much time in actually fine tuning this machine yet. Right now it's working um, as is, not too bad. Uh, I've only made a couple of tweaks to this gun since I made it. Uh, I know that there's a couple other things that could be done to make it a little bit better, but right now it's working. The improvements that would need to be made to this gun um, are really only to shorten the amount of time it takes to vapor blast something. The other thing is with this fitting, you have to be able to hold this in the lathe so the end can be gripped in a three jaw. And then you have to drill out the middle. There's a little bit of a web inside there that um, would be in the way for the nozzle to pass through where it needs to go. So once you drill that out or bore that out or whatever process in the lay that you want to do to make sure you have enough room, um, then it all goes together. The only thing uh, you have to watch out for is this part of it right here. See how this neck's down like that? Well, when you put that hole through there, you don't want to go through the side of that because then you'd have to either repair that or you'd have to get another one. So you don't want to do that. So once you do all those things and assemble this, you're off to the races and you can uh, fine tune this thing to your heart's content. And I'm sure that you can actually get it to perform quite well if you have the time. Here we go. Here's all the individual components. We have our three quarter inch barb half inch barb, nozzle with one, that's one eighth inch NPT. Here we have a non-ferrous strainer and it had to be machined out in the center in order for the nozzle to be able to pass through. Some of these you can get are straight across and I, I think those are a little bit better. This is a compression fitting. It's got pipe thread on one side and then this is just straight thread. This cap threads on so that, that could fit over top of it. That's a six mil ceramic tip. Okay then there's the gun reinstalled. Mesh is screwed down. Now we're going to have a look at the pump and the reservoir. Okay, here is the pump that I'm using. If we can see with the three quarter horse submersible sump pump. And really, I just looked at like a million different pumps. Uh, I guess I read lots of reviews. I don't really recall anybody specifically recommending this pump for vapor blasting, but so far it's it's worked pretty good. It does have a float switch on it, which isn't really necessary. Um, you can disable it or uh, use it just to make sure that you keep enough water in your reservoir so you don't run your pump dry as a safety. So do the piping arrangement, so you have to reduce it down. I think that was an uh, inch and a half. I reduced it down to one inch, and then I've got a T here with a barb. This is the recirculation line. So I'm not putting all of the pumps output right into the into the gun. It's got this here, which helps kind of reduce the flow a little bit, but it also keeps the slurry agitated with this line here. And it took a little bit of, um, took a little bit of playing around to get this set up so that it would move the slurry nicely in the setup that I have, which you'll see in a minute. So once I kind of got it dialed in, it kept the slurry um, suspended and it, it made it a little bit more um, consistent. Right, and so then we're going to attach that line to it once we get the tub back in here and we fill that up with water and then she'll be ready to go. 
Okay, here's the container that I use. It is 17 gallons, or for us metric folk, 64 and a half liters. So let's put the pump in there. Now you can see I can adjust that ever so slightly just so that it swirls the slurry through there, but not really enough water in there right now, so I'll go get some more water. So I topped it up with water, the switch is being made, I've reconnected the output line, so it's basically ready to fire up. I don't have the compressor on now, but we can definitely start it and do a water test. So here's the compressor that I ended up buying. It's a Ingersoll Rand. It's a five horse compressor and it's got a 60 gallon tank. It's a two stage compressor. And it's 220. So I've got uh, 220 volt here in my garage. So I utilize that and uh, so far the only, it's not even really a complaint, but the only thing that I'm gonna do as far as upgrading um, with the compressor goes is I'm going to get a accumulator tank, probably another 60 gallon one or maybe an 80 or something if I can find it and have that here in the shop. And that will uh, give me a little bit more of an air buffer so that the compressor isn't kicking on all the time. Here you can see the blast media that I use. For now, I'm just using glass bead and I'm using a uh, number five and a number three. And the number five is um, a finer grade glass bead, whereas number three is a little bit coarser. Um, and you can mix them apparently, so you're kind of getting the benefit of uh, both grits at the same time, and it seems to work pretty good. Thanks for hanging out with me in the garage today and uh, thank you for checking out my new video series. Keep your eyes peeled for future episodes where we will talk about design, build and install updates to the Vapor Blaster to make it a little bit more user friendly.